The tax working group has signalled New Zealand should tax emissions more, leave GST alone, and it offered suggestions on a couple of different options for a capital gains tax. But it has disappointed those who are expecting some strong support of a sugar tax. The government has already responded to the group, led by Sir Michael Cullen, signalling its intention to in introduce a capital gains tax by 2021. John Shewan is a former chair of PwC. He's also a member of the previous government's working tax group. I asked him how this report compares to the work he did eight years ago. Yeah, the two working groups really had quite different starting points because we had an open book, so we were looking primarily at structure and could we uh, change the balance of GST and income tax, etc., which we recommended. This group had a far more restrictive terms of reference. Point one and point two, they had a very clear steer from the government to look in detail at things like capital gains tax, so really quite a different perspective, but we both agreed, both groups have agreed, fundamentally the system's not broken, but it can always be improved. Okay, so the sort of tweaks that this working group is suggesting, some of them are fairly non-committal, but there are any surprise packages that you weren't expecting? Uh, three really. Well, one is the depth of the work on capital gains tax, we'll come back to that. The second though, sugar tax, I thought there'd be quite a detailed analysis of that. Frankly the groups kind of kicked the touch, it said the government needs to work out its goals in that area. Well, I think their goals in relation to sugar are pretty clear, we want to reduce consumption, so that I think is disappointing. It's also interesting that they are recommending a, uh, some con concessions for retirement savings to encourage retirement savings for people on below 48,000. So that's quite a change in terms of where New Zealand's been in recent history. And then finally on the surprises list, I suppose, uh, a suggestion of maybe a tax on vacant houses and, and or empty houses and vacant land. And again, that's, I suppose, uh, targeting that housing affordability area. I was going to say, is that so much of a surprise? They did say that, look, this, uh, well, the issue around um, the, the, the tax there is, is not a cause of the housing crisis, but has sort of exacerbated it. So in a sense, it's probably not so much of a shock that they've been uh, you know, attacking that area, that, um, and, and particularly this, this thing of, of, of houses that aren't being vacant. The, the, the um, housing minister wants to see people in them. Yeah, I, I guess in one sense that's right. However, the broader issue and the elephant in the room of is should we be taxing the gains on houses? And other than owner-occupied houses, uh, that's the one that's going to require further work. I would have thought other housing-related measures may have been wrapped up within that, but this can be dealt with on a standalone basis, but it was a little bit of a surprise. And I guess things that aren't surprises is we don't want to touch GST. Also, we probably need to increase those environmental taxes when we're comparing ourselves to what other OECD countries are doing. I mean, I, I think the tax working group's done a really good job in ruling out some things that clearly we shouldn't be doing. They've ruled out um, an overall wealth tax, they've ruled out playing around with the GST system to exempt certain things. Uh, they've suggested we look more towards environmental taxes. So there's some very clear uh, statements there. They've ruled out a financial transactions tax. Some commentary I've seen has said this report does nothing. That's absolutely wrong. It provides some very clear signals. Where some people are disappointed is that they wanted the answer on capital gains tax and we haven't got that yet. Right. There has been a response already from uh, Grant Robertson. He has written to uh, Sir Michael Cullen. Um, the wording here about capital gains um, and I guess what we were calling the non-committal approach from the committee is that uh, they're requesting that in the final report that they do in some months' time uh, that it examines whether a tax on realised gains or the risk-free rate of return method of taxation or a mix of both is the best method for extending a potential capital income tax. So they're basically saying we want one, what's the best one? Uh, what, what is, you know, do you make uh, of that comment in, in that letter from Grant Robertson a, a, a real intention to introduce a capital gains tax? I think there is, a, you can read a pretty clear signal into that. Now, to give them credit though, they are saying that we're going to go out and consult and there will be a lot of conferences etc discussing these things and the pros and cons and I guess at the end of the day it's a political question and it will come down to that. This working group has a huge amount of work. They'll be drinking out of a fire hose between now and December because they've got to get this work done by December. There's a, a, a lot of detail in the report on the design and it's, it's really, really complicated. So it's going to be a big challenge for them and their decision point come about December before Christmas will be probably the last week before Christmas. Do we go with the traditional capital gains tax which most other countries have got? And I would say the answer is probably going to be yes. That is, it's on a realised basis, it excludes houses, uh, you'll have generous rollover and it'll be um, only applicable to value increments after the date it comes in, 1 April 2021. 
or do they go the risk-free rate of return method? I think the signal in the report is the latter is a bit complicated, hard to sell to the public, uh, even though it might be conceptually better. So I think we're probably headed down the route that, ironically, the Australians went down some 20 or 30 years ago. Of course, we have to put all this in context. These are, are going to be recommendations, and I guess they are ultimately the proposals that Labor comes forward with will be election uh, promises come the 2020 election. Uh, these are not things, as has been made very clear um, by the Prime Minister, that will be coming in in this term. Yeah, so it's interesting. The, the government is planning to legislate for whatever they decide to do, but with a, an effective date after the next election, which would likely be 1 April 2021. So in that sense, the, the, the rules will be passed, but they will have to campaign on the basis of something as substantive as a capital gains tax. Most politicians around the world haven't really wanted to do that. So in one sense, it's quite a, a risky move, quite an interesting move. So the degree of consultation and the rebalancing of the overall system is the, the, the sale job that they're going to have to do. That was John Shewan, formerly of uh, PwC, also a member of the previous government's tax working group, giving his analysis on the report that was uh, handed down today.